Hi, my name is Joe, and just over 100 days ago, I decided to embark on a journey of teaching myself to code with resources online. I'm hoping at the end of it to start applying for jobs in this field. I'm still not sure exactly what kind of part of the industry I want to be in, whether that's front end, back end. I'm just kind of enjoying the journey at this point. Every day on this channel, I upload a 60 second video of what I've been up to and how I've been finding it. And it's been really good to hear from people who are in the same position as me with the comments or, or people who are further along. That's really motivating for me. And people have even said, you know, it's motivating to watch my journey. So we've got this nice kind of circular motivation thing going on. And I thought I'd just report back today with a more long form video of a few things that I've found on my journey so far. Maybe you'll find it interesting or useful if you're doing the same thing. Maybe if you're a bit further down the line, you can kind of say whether these things hold up as you really get into it, because I'm still a complete beginner in the grand scheme of things, but slowly I feel my, my skills are growing and I'm really enjoying it. So here are the five things. So I think the first thing is just to say that you know, when I started this journey, I didn't know how it was going to go, whether I would be able to teach myself to a standard that I felt was really worthwhile or beneficial. But the first point is that you can teach yourself from home and it is kind of worthwhile and it's extremely rewarding. It's extremely challenging. I'd say to the degree that it's challenging and difficult, it's also rewarding when you do break through and, and finally solve that problem. I've basically taken myself from knowing only very basic HTML and CSS at the start of this. And now I would say I'm fairly competent in HTML and CSS. And then I got started on JavaScript as well. And that was the first real coding language that I got into. And then I'm now taking the CS50 course from Harvard, very famous online course. And at the moment we're learning C in that. Again, while I'm not an expert in these things, I do feel I have skills now that I didn't have at the start. Um, I, can, I can see my skills are growing and I can solve problems that are presented to me. So things are definitely moving in the right direction. It is difficult, you know, I've had to develop a routine for myself. I've had to develop motivation for myself. It's something that has got easier as I've gone on. At the start it was like, right, force yourself to do this and now it's more like, no, this is just what I'm doing. And so I'm really in a flow now. And of course, as you kind of get further into a subject, your, your motivation tends to grow because you, you really get into grips with it. And that's been the case for me. Um, I, I really wake up in the morning excited to, to get cracking on whatever the challenge is for that day. I'm fortunate at the moment that I'm kind of living off savings from a previous job that I had. Um, that's not going to last forever, so I do have a, a slight pressure now to start thinking about getting um, back into employment again, but I want to make sure I'm at a level where I can get a job that I really want. So on to the second point, um, and really one of the reasons I kind of started doing this channel was just to kind of reach out and just become part of the community in some way. And, you know, on TikTok and YouTube, I've, I've really had that. I've had people get in touch and, like I say, comment on my videos. And people have even offered to mentor me and get me involved in, in projects that they're working on. I really appreciate that. And my second point is that this, this community has just been so much more welcoming and positive and friendly than I thought it was going to be. A bit naively, I just assumed everyone would be kind of keyboard warriors sat behind their PCs like kind of taking a dump on anyone who didn't know quite as much as them. But honestly, nothing could have been further from the truth. I've been so pleasantly surprised. And, you know, I'm involved in other communities in, in my life, like music and things like that. But I would say this one is just full of people that want to help you and want to see you improve and want to improve with you. There's very little ego going on. And that's just been great. It, it's made me realize that this is something I could be a part of for a long time. So um, yeah, thanks to everyone who, who's kind of welcomed me in any way. And um, yeah, I just think it's great. Now the third point relates to actually working on problems and code. And this is something that's kind of helped me with my mindset. 
Um, often when I'm or we're presented with a task, I think it can be quite overwhelming at first as you struggle to think, how am I even going to get started on this? But I've found, and this has been reinforced by the lecturers on the CS50 course that I'm taking at the moment, this is a point they return to quite often. You just need to break things down into much smaller chunks and just get started. I, I often find that if I just start typing, often it's a for loop, I just start typing for, things just start to flow from that. And also on CS50, the way they present their problems for you to solve, they, they do break it up into function by function. And that's really the best approach that I've found. Um, you just have to work on that first little bit get that done and then you can kind of move that out of the way, kind of forget about it and move on to the next bit. And before you know it, once you've spent a day or two on the problem, it's just come together and you haven't had to think of it as this huge, overwhelming, zoomed out thing. You've had to kind of zoom in on each little problem and figure that out as you go. And that's just a general approach that I found is really helpful and I'm sure it will continue to be helpful for me going forward. Now the fourth point I'd like to mention is that different resources will help you out in different ways and teach you different things and it might seem a bit obvious to say that but I have found that to be true because I've tried, well, th mainly three different sites or courses so far and the first one was Free Code Camp and the clue's in the name, it's a free service and what they do is they present you with a challenge or a problem or something you're going to achieve but they kind of hold your hand and walk you through it step by step again um, and that's good because at the end of it you can be like I did that, I wrote that but you also know that you were told what to do every step of the way kind of thing so that was good for getting me into it with the HTML and CSS especially because it was free and I was kind of still testing the waters at that point then I moved on to Code Academy, and this is something, I think they have a free course. I ended up paying for it because you get access to a lot more, um, and the variety that you can get on Code Academy of different coding languages is really quite impressive. I will say, don't pay full price because they're always basically running a promotion for 50% off. Now, Code Academy, because you pay for it, it looks a little more slick. And like I say, I think the choice of what you can study is a lot more broad. And on Code Academy, it's a bit more like a traditional course in the sense that they'll teach you some stuff and then they'll say, right, go away and do this. And so that was a bit better in terms of me starting to solve problems on my own and having to think a bit more about things. It was a bit more challenging, basically. And then now I'm on CS50, the online course from Harvard University, and that has been quite a step up. It, to be honest, I think a lot of people say you can do that course with no programming experience and I think that's probably possible but I'm so glad that I had a little bit of JavaScript under my belt before I started it. Um, I have found it extremely, extremely challenging at times but this is the one that's really pushed me and shown me that I can solve stuff. It does take me a very long time, for example, I've been working on a very notorious problem called Tiedemann from that course and it basically took me four days of solid study and coding to figure it out. But when I did it, it was extremely, extremely rewarding because that, that was one of these where I looked at it and I was like, can I even do this? I didn't know whether I'd be able to do it. But with time and application and learning, um, I got there in the end. So basically, I'm, I'm really glad I've tried these three approaches and who knows what I'll go on to next but each one has kind of helped me in a different way and yeah I think it's perhaps good to just sample things because there are so many resources online at the moment you don't just have to stick with one and um, I found that to be true and I think I'll be the same going forward. And my fifth point is something that a lot of people have said to me, recommended to me and I've found to be true here and in everything else in life, basically. And that's that you have to do things. You can't just take in the information. You can't just read or watch a course. You have to actually do stuff. You know, with CS50, I'm sure you could just watch through it and think, oh yeah, theoretically, I understand that. Like recently, in this past week on CS50, 
they were teaching us about recursion and recursive functions. And I watched the lecture and then I was like, yeah, I can see what's happening. But then when it actually came to coding a recursive function for Tiedemann, it was like, hang on, I don't really know how to write this to make it work myself. And I got there in the end, but again, I had to spend a lot of time on it. But now I feel like I have a thorough understanding of recursive functions and that's because I've actually had to write one from scratch and I'd say that's the same with anything you know there was a point after I'd been learning the web dev stuff HTML and CSS for a while that I kind of took a step back away from the courses and just worked on a website of my own and that is really when you come up across all the challenges that you will in real life and I feel like I definitely learned a lot putting everything into practice and I need to do a lot more of that not only to develop my portfolio so I've got something to show soon but also just to take a step away from the, the courses and the learning and actually produce something that's more like real world experience and a bonus point I'd just like to include at the end number six if you will is uh, don't leave drinks near your laptop because I did that the other day and ended up knocking it over and some water went into my keyboard and I wondered whether my laptop was going to break. Fortunately, for the, for the time being, it's been okay. But yeah, now I'm just planning to keep my drinks well away. So thanks for watching to the end. Maybe that's been interesting for you. You know, this channel for me, I'm just experimenting, seeing what kind of works and, and really just trying to track my journey. I might do a few more long form videos like this. But yeah, um, thanks to anyone who's watched, subscribed, commented, anything. You know, I really do appreciate it and it's great. I'm enjoying the journey. I hope you are too. And uh, yeah, let's keep going.